Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is based on some one year old work with Johannes, Ian, and Timo. And there's now, so it builds on that, and, and there's also some joint work in progress right now, also with Johannes. Then G U Wu and G Z U. Right. Uh, okay. And so before I start with our actual setup, let me just explain what Basil Kamnikov is all about. Um, I guess I'll have to fix two primes L different from P. Uh, for now, let G prime, I'll change this notation then, let be a split connected reductive group over FP bar, log on series T, uh, maybe fix some pinning or something. Then also needs a U R Hardy. Over the power series, right? Okay. Uh, right. Then during this talk, I'll always take the coefficients of the sheaves to be QL bar. Uh, G will be the dual group over QL bar as well of G prime, I guess. And uh, there's no prime. You'll understand why in a minute. Uh, then. You have the no potent colony, which appeared already in two talks at least, I think, by uh, Charlotte and David. Um, and there's a Springer resolution. Where this is the, the Lie algebra of you. Of the implants radical B, and then okay, Springer resolution. And then you can consider the standby variety, which is just this kind of uh, fiber product, also known as the variety of triples. I think uh, Charles thought there was something similar to this here. And a fundamental result of then then and Lustig, um is that they basically computed the k zero the equivalent k zero of the standard variety um and they realize that this is uh, of coherent sheaves on there, uh, they realize that this is basically um, the group ring on the Ivory Val group. Um, right. And actually, they do more, they also compute sort of G hats. Time GM had equivalent sheaves, and then you get the a finite algebra. But I'll suffice it to for me, it will suffice to have this right now. Uh, and it's also not hard to see that this turns out to be the same as the K0 of the tall sheaves. Oh. Uh, there should be primes here. On the hack stack associated to this EOR I prime. Um, right. And uh, 
uh, fundamental result of Reza Kavnikov is to um, extend this to an equivalence of the right categories. So you construct this. Okay, so you constructed this equivalence. And today I'll, I'll speak a bit about this, but in the piadic context. So these groups live in aqua characteristic. Um, and what we want to do um, is to replace them by some piadic groups. And I think uh, Shin and Zhu announced that he and Zhu were even now to do this, but uh, the way I understood from discussions and so, so on was that they rather, like they compare the etal sites uh, in mixed characteristic and aqua characteristic. Whereas what we're interested in doing is to, you know, restart from the beginning and try to prove this um, the same way as we can of it using like perfectile geometry, which uh, as you'll see in a moment. Okay. Right. Okay, so now. I come to my setup of taking a finite extension of QP wherever. Now G will be split connected reductive F group with the old group G hat. Uh, so maybe also fix a pinning. Such a then I'll take a UR model O model of G, uh, where O is actually, I should have said, the ring of insurance. So it's clear. But I'll usually, usually write K for the when I have run is for FP bar. It's for, okay. And so one of the objects that we have here, uh, right? So there's this, as we've seen already, some instances of it during the summer, during this conference, there's this GRG, which is the VR plus Kasmanian, um, which lives over SPD of F. And you can also write it as a co limit as mu runs over um, the coids of T modulo the action of the vial group. Um, uh, you can also take B dominant characters if you want. It's the same. Um, right. So this is a, a diamond, so we call it a short diamond or maybe sometimes even short, right? Although that's not uh, very good terminology. Right. And the way this appears is via the Brouillard stratification. You just take this sub of of GRG whose points are given by the correct cosets. Uh, Right, and at the same time, you also have this FRI, which is for me the, you have the VIT flag variety. It lives over spec of K. Um, and, and there's also stratification. Uh, indexed by the Uvalde Val group. And now these objects, these closed objects here are, um, well, they're not schemes yet. They're, they're actually perfect schemes. Um, so this is basically, so I guess in the language of, you know, as Ian was defining it, it's the quotient LG 
mod L plus I when you take perfect K algebras. Whereas here you have a similar quotient where you're taking perfectors over uh, F, right? Okay. Now, how do you connect those two objects? So there's this building some green field. Uh, which is which I denote by gear i and it lives over it's only a v sheaf over spd of o um, right and it has a property that the generic fiber is grg and the special fiber is the V sheaf attached to FLI? Uh, right. Okay. And actually, if you want, you can also, there's some bounded variants of this GRI, and for, I guess, historic reasons, uh, we call this the local models because it appear, they appear sort of work of hot pot sync for the first time in order to control singularities of uh, RZ spaces. But I, but they're not as complicated. It's just the closures of these Schubert diamonds uh, inside this integral model. Okay. Right. And so um, in this AGLR paper, what we did was uh, study the geometry of those guys, uh, the MI and Mu's, um, and we were able to prove it for me in school. Then uh, this comes from uh, from the unique scheme. So you can't expect that in a non skill case because sort of already in GRG, the sort of geometry that you get in those Schubert diamonds in the right. So in these objects here, like you can find some non-classical in there, spaces in there. So it cannot be representable. Uh, but anyway, like you show that that's a special fiber. You can still ask what the special fiber is, and it's just this thing here. So the V-shift attached to AI mu, uh, which appears this type of space, or maybe only as a set appeared in work of Kotwitz and Hopperpot. It's what they called back then the admissible sets, but now I guess I'll call it locus. Um, this AI mu is just the union of the flag varieties. Uh, which are bounded by, okay, so I need to take a union along. Um, the news are basically representatives of mu. Uh, so this goes to mu downstairs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a very explicit um, set of varieties. So this basically tells you. So these are the irreducible components, Mars and uh, right. And the way. Okay. So the brief one is complicated, and I don't want to talk about it, but. Uh, I mean, two certain feeds as an input, and um, um, you might have already um, guessed that the way the two goes is via, you know, you consider Satake sheaves, um, 
and you look at the support of the nearby cycles of the SATAC issues. Uh, and so let me explain what this means. All right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, basically, factual survey. So, one of the main things they prove in their, in their paper is that there's an equivalence in representations of G hats with so called coefficient coefficients to this set of ULA perverse sheaves on the Hicka stack. Uh, and I have to base change everything to um, to the complete algebraic closure of that. Right. And the second stack is, as you probably know, just the, qu the quotient stack by the action of L plus G on the left. Um, right. So what can you do? To get to the special fiber, there's this obvious diagram. And so you can define um, in the usual manner by pushing forward and pulling back. Which goes from the generic fiber of the Hackestack to the special fiber. Right. Um, but, um, you know, here it's not so clear if this has good properties. As one usually associates with nearby cycles. So I guess we have to prove a few things. Um, so the first thing, I guess, I guess in a sense it's reminiscent of stuff that Ian talked about much more simpler, is that you always have this comparison map. Uh, So basically, um, this hike stack is the special fiber of something defined with perfecto. So I, I guess I can call it analytic. Uh, there's also a version which is just scheme theoretic, and you have an associated drive category. And so you can map to here. Uh, and it actually lands in those so-called ULA objects. And it's an equivalence. So this is something which is a bit reassuring. So it's going to tell that the good objects in here are actually just classical. Um, and the second part is that ARPSA respects dual sheaves. So it's going to map dual sheaves in here to dual objects in there. Um, Right, so in particular, you get functor, which we call Z, uh, which is just a composition of nearby cycles with a satake equivalence. And so this goes from right of G hat to uh, like a stack of i, and and from now on I'll just drop the the revit or the subscript k because it's it's all now going to take place in the special fiber whenever I mention it. But this is the fundamental fundamental functor from uh, from which we get everything. Uh, so basically, then part two that that's how it works. You apply z to some representation v which is of highest weight to me, and then 
uh, I mean the theorem above, and then you compute the support of that sheaf set V, uh, and you can actually, you know, basically the stack equivalence is going to give you those Schubert varieties. You know, if you play a little with constant terms and so on, that's what you get. Uh, right. Um, yeah, and I should say probably with this functor Z, uh, again, if you, so the story was already more or less known in equal characteristic and then uh, this functor was first considered by um, Dennis Gates Curry, uh, right. So, um, right, the next thing you want to do is verify something about this functor, which I, I think I call this, maybe I call, no. so this, the, the letter Z stands for centrality, basically, and so you want to, I think, so you want to show that this is a central model functor. And actually, you even want to know that it takes values in primrose shoes because that's what you expect classically uh, in the algebraic theory. But uh, I can't do that yet. So I'll just discuss the centrality. So, okay, let us recall that this is the two gates in the equal characteristic setting. Uh, right, and, and so the idea to get the centrality is as usual, you consider diagrams of two different modifications and you either switch them or consider them separately or both at the same time, uh, which I will describe as letting points collide, um, and from that geometric diagram, you can deduce an isomorphism to the convolution on the right and on the left with these sheaves at V. Uh, okay, so that's the start. Uh, then there are going to be some more compatibilities that you have to verify, and I'd like to say some words about the, the the most complicated one, which is basically, so there's going to be some associativity in A and the monoid out in V, but those are very interesting. You just improve on the diagrams or something, uh, you write more likes. Uh, but we also need compatibility with the symmetry. Symmetry constraints. So what do I mean by this? Uh, like if you convolve that V with that W, then there is going to, so you can switch the order, but on the other hand, if it's monoidal and you also have this symmetry of the tensor product, you know, these two ways of commuting should be the same. Um, and this is a bit more tricky. Um, and for this, we actually, this requires us to do some kind of nearby cycles over uh, a two-dimensional base. Um, and when you're working with values, you have this, you can take a product of OC with itself over the points. And this is kind of what you want to do when it, I don't know, like um, gates score um all the other people in geometric representation theory usually usually they they had to provide some um, 
an adaptation of the notion of nearby cycles over two dimensional ways, which didn't work in those cases and by miracle seem to work for those sheaves that you're interested in. Like in setting of diamonds, it there's no there are no issues. Uh it's much more neat. Uh, I guess. Um right. That takes care of the centrality, more or less. Um, the perversity, although it was very easy uh, classically, because you just have this art in vanishing, uh, we don't have that, so we need to do something else. Uh, so for that, we look at the so-called walking motifunctors, um, which are some sort of Categorification of those Balmstein translation elements in the you already egg algebra. And they are also an ingredient in the full Vesu Kamikov thing. So uh, anyway, it makes sense for us to consider them. Um, they are functors of the sort. You you can apply them to a complex of lambda modules of QLR modules. So let me just write as a very tall categories of points. And you go to that of the hacker stack. Right. And how do you define how does one define this functor? This is going to be uniquely, you should raise the words probably, uniquely determined by the following two properties. Okay, so first it should be monoidal in some sense. And so if you convolve uh, two of them, then it should be the same as just, so what is new? I didn't say, I guess. This is a weight uh, of the torus. And so when you convolve, you should sum the dual coates and then um, you should take the tensor product of the complexes. Right. And then the condition that, so this is some sort of extension by linearity. And so we need to fix what it is somewhere. And so we fix it on, fix it on dominant coates. Uh, Wait a minute. And I want to write it like this, uh, if no one complains. Uh, what is, so let me explain. This uh, object here is the co-standard reverse sheaf. On and when the result ah new needs to be B dominant. Otherwise, this doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, right, and an important thing to note here is because we're working with um with a UI group. Uh, this means all its orbits, so the Schubert cells themselves are all affine spaces. So the, you know, when you define this thing here, you don't have to perverse truncate. So it's already perverse if you take some, just some, you just push forward along the orbit, the drive push forward, and it's in, and then you shift, of course, then it's going to be perverse. And so if you have another complex, you just do the same thing with a complex. That's what I mean by that tensor product. So this fixes what the Wakimoto shift is in the, in the dominant file chamber with respect to the B we fixed in the beginning. Um, and then you extend by linearity. I guess I should say, and it's also kind of natural to presume that if you look at the opposite file chamber, the, the shifts that you get are going to be the, the standard objects. So those that, that are extended by zero from the orbit, right? 
Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just write over here. So usually I'll also write for simplicity, J as the sum of all the J means and um, it will usually be restricted to rep of T hats, which is basically the heart of these categories just because so it's just X T lambda graded module. So it makes sense to regard it as representations of T hats, right. Yeah, I wrote that, right? And then there's a plus then, you need to start to see. Let's start here. Yeah, it otherwise it makes so much sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just use the monivality, the property one, you just extend by linearity, because you can write any co as sort of the difference of two dominant co -weights. Like, you just need to check that the sheaf has an inverse for convolution, which it does, and then, uh, and then you do it. Right. Okay. And what is the main result here is, well, yes, usually you have a best alteration for your representation. And so in this uh, hacker category or drive category, you still have that curiously. So the CV is not only perverse, but it emits um, a filtration with graving with gravings equal to J of V, uh, restricted to the represent, you know, seen as a T hat representation. Uh, right, and what is the idea? So, I like again. So, who proved this originally? It was Akipov as Rukavnikov. So, if you allow me, I'll just write AB. Um, in the first paper, which then led to the full Bezrukavnikov equivalence, this is one of the steps you want to do. Um, and the way we do it, so they, they already know that this guy is perverse. They also use the fact that it's a central sheaf to sort of, um, you know, they, they convolve with the dominant walking metal sheaf. So one of those J means there. And they see that it can be written as an extension of certain complexes concentrated in certain places. And then they use the perversity to fix the degrees where these guys sit. Uh, and this doesn't really work for us, not exactly. Uh, so using perversity. So what do we have to do instead is okay. So the centrality we still have, so we can. At least write the set V as an extension of complexes in the essential image of J of the functor J. Um, then, so they use the perversity itself to see what the pieces were somehow in a convoluted manner. 
But instead, what do we do is we identify the pieces by taking constant terms. And what happens with the constant terms morphisms is that they sort of isolate each of the walking mental pieces that appear. And so we can see that they sit in degree zero because that's true in the generic fiber for the Sataki sheaf or something. Um, so yeah, I like to think that that's a better proof for them. Whatever. Um, Okay, so if that's reassuring, and so right now we have the following functor. So we have the central functor Z, we have this walking metal functor J, they go to perv I, always taken in, in the special form, sorry. And the next thing we want to do is we sort of want to derive this, but uh, you know it's not that simple. Is there a certain deficiencies that I have time to highlight? Um, you want to pass the derived category, and here you also want to have some derived category. Uh, And you take the J equivariant coherent sheaves on the Springer resolution of the nilpot of the dual nilpotent count. So there's an obvious map here from representation of G hat times T hat. You just you know you take like like a representation. You say basically send if you have V a representation of G and U a coit of T, you just map it to V times this year. So there's a, an associated line bundle then can turn through with, with the representation and this defines a geoequivariant structure. Uh, so we have this and we want to extend to this. Um, so we want to get a functor F here and this is called the archipelago vessel kavnikov functor or AB functor for time reasons. Okay. Okay, so how do you define this functor F? So the idea, sort of the issue I should say, it's like you can't really construct it via Tanakian formalisms directly. There are no good abelian categories. So if you take Korean sheaves here, so this is not going to be T exact. So it's not going to send Korean sheaves into perverse sheaves. So that's an issue. And so the way they proceed is they still want to do some sort of Tanakian formalism. Uh, so instead, uh, what AB do, and this also works in our setting pretty much in the same way, is that they consider some affine scheme which replaced the Springer resolution. So where does this guy live? This lives in. Uh, you take this sort of T hat torsor over the flag variety, uh, the classical one, then it's quasi affine, so you can take its affine hole. And then there's still the Lie algebra. And so you can define this in there um, as the, some kind of stabilizer for a certain uh, Lie algebra action. It's not that. The algebra doesn't really, it acts by derivations, but it can still sort of define something. Um, and the advantage of this guy is that 
it's somehow more explicit and then you can just by combining the so there's a monogamy sort of endomorphism on both sides of the equivalence or the functor we want to get here on Korean sheaves that's just again a feature of the Lie algebra uh nil potent and the monogamy is nil potent uh that's important and there are going to be some sort of hooker relations we're going to be satisfied and then this is also satisfied on the et etal side. So there's going to be monogamy coming from the Galois group. Um, and you can verify that it's nil potent as well. It sort of follows by the Wakimoto filtration because there the Galois action is trivial. Um, and then I guess you get a functor from between additive categories so it's, it's something quite strange i guess so this category is not really so it's, you don't take who in cheese but you take those that are of the form you know just the ones that you know <laughs> uh there are direct summons of of this Right. And so this allows you to define a functor. It's well defined. Uh, right. And then you notice that the derived category that you want to get is actually. Oh. It's a value quotient of chain complexes applied to that additive category so then you're basically reduced and, and you know the kernel is basically those chain complexes whose homology is concentrated on sort of the boundary of this guy so the part that doesn't map uh to the actual smooth scheme and now you're left with verifying that certain complexes are killed under under this thing here and then you get the functor f the a b functor so this is how you get the functor right uh but that functor is not in general an equivalence because right it, it can be because you want to have the the steinbach variety here and so, so sort of it's like you would have to you kind of need two copies of the functor so what actually paul and Mesut kavnikov did first in their paper was to uh you know so they consider some some Whitaker datum and some sort of uh, Whitaker variant of the of the Hecke. So there's this so-called Achtin Schreier local system, which is obtained as a direct factor of just the push forward of the constant local system along a Achtin Schreier cover. It basically corresponds to choosing a pith root of unity. Uh, and then and you define some kind of drives the tall category of this heck i w so this stands for he already we took her and despite my notation there's no stack at least not one that i know of i'd like very much for there to be a stack but uh and this is sort of the category of sheaves on the flag variety with with a l plus then you take you don't take this evaluate you need to take its opposite one like the one for in the other vial chamber but with the same 
special vertex. Um, and then, right, and then the action is going to be somehow governed. Oh, and it's not, sorry, it's not of the L plus, you still need to take the unipotent radical. So it's the pro P opposite you already saw. And then the action is governed by this local system somehow. Uh, and this has the property. Um, so for instance, there's going to be a, a so-called averaging functor from I equivariant sheaves to Iwari Whitaker equivariant sheaves on the fly variety. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can try to imagine there's a map of stacks that induces it or something. Uh, right. Okay. What is the reason for considering this? Basically, um, the advantage is now that um, I, I did say at some point that there were some deficiencies with the with the category of equivariant perverse sheaves on for the flag variety. Basically, okay, so you know if you take like the Hasmanian, eh, you know that those sheaves are just perverse sheaves are just representations of a group. This is not true um, or in the Uari case, of, of course, but um, there's something that apparently people in representation theory like to have a lot, uh, which are these so-called highest weight categories. And so if you look at, there's still a good definition of perverse sheaves here. If you look at perverse sheaves, you already with the curly covariant ones, then this is a highest weight category. Um, right. And like this means, for instance, that you have tilting objects, um, which are indexed by, by co weights. And this is something that fails already for classical fly varieties like G mod V. If you look at perverse sheaves, there are going to be certain tilting objects in there, they're not equivalent for the torus. They would be for the impotent radical, not for the torus, and, and that's bad. Uh, right. Okay. And so I guess, um, how much time do I have left? It's just 10 minutes, or did we start later? I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, um, right. So I guess from now on, I'd like to assume G's of type A. Um, I can get sort of rid of it, but it's easier this way. And the main result that we have so far is that the composition of this Ivaldi Whitaker Thing as an equivalence. Uh, sorry. So I need call. Okay, so this is an equivalence. Right. And so since I Okay, since I'm running out of time, let me just say there, there are two main ingredients to this. Um, the first one is you need to show that the image of the central sheaves after averaging, that these are tilting. So the kind of good objects 
This means also, in case you don't know, that it emits a filtration by standard objects and also co-standard objects. Uh, and okay, so for instance, for type A groups, this has they have the property that their weight lattice is generated by minuscule weights, and so in this case, it's much easier to prove this. Uh, so you basically, you know, you extend by monoidality from from the minuscule case, which is almost trivial, because because for minuscule mu, like uh, there's not so much happening. There's just one stratum that contrib contributes, and so that's not very hard. Uh, and the second thing you need to show is that, okay, so is the, you need to construct the so-called regular quotient. And maybe I'll use the rest of my time to explain what this is. Right, so first thing, okay, so there is a certain quotient of these sort of three equivariant coherent sheaves that were used in the construction. Yeah, I guess now I'll, I won't take the affinite module. Uh, and there's a, an obvious quotient that you obtain once you pass to the regular orbit. That's why it's called the regular quotient, I guess. Um, so this is the regular orbits. So the orbit of a, nilpot a regular nilpotent element uh, inside the dual nilpotent cone. And so this is smooth, so it's math. It lifts isomorphically to the Springer resolution. Right, and similarly, you should have a quotient of the, let's say the equivalent category, but it will also be a quotient of the Iori Whitaker category. Um, I call perv zero, and it's basically what happens when you kill the span of all IC sheaves which have positive dimensional supports. So somehow you, you're only left with um, constant sheaves on the point, but then, but it comes as a quotient. So it has some extra morphisms and so on. Um, and what you have to do is, Basically, you need to construct a map from the centralizer in G hat of a certain nilpotent element. Uh, it's going to map to here, and then it's going to factor through. Through this is going to be the restriction to a subgroup H, and this rep of H is going to sit fully faithfully inside this guy. Uh, and so what is n? This is a nilpotent element in the Lie algebra that comes from the monodromy. So we know that we have the monodromy 
uh, operation on perverse use coming from the Galois action, and then uh, we use it to construct this morphism. And the proposition, which is of fundamental relevance, otherwise there would be no equivalence and nothing would make sense is that this N guy is regular. Because this is true on this thing, just by definition, because it's constructed on the regular orbit and you have an illpotent endomorphism here on the sheaves, but then it's going to send to you and it's going to be regular. So, you know, if there's an equivalence, this guy has to be regular too. Uh, right, and what is the idea here? Uh, okay, so what do we be do <sighs> classically? They argue via weights. Okay, so there's this result from Gavach that says that if you take, now you need to take base sheaves. So, uh, yeah, basically, you need to descend the whole setup to a finite extension of QP rather than of QP, whatever. But bear with me for a second. And so in the classical situation in equi-characteristic, Gavach show that if you apply nearby cycles to a pure sheave of some weights, weight zero, say, then you get a what's, I don't know if this is standard terminology, I guess, because I learned it from a certain paper, but what can be called monogamy pure, which means that, so there's going to be a weight filtration and there's going to be a monogamy filtration. And they two agree, and the two agree on the nearby cycles. Uh, so that's the theorem of GABA. And this is some kind of local form of the weight monogamy conjecture. So it's it's supposed to be hard, I guess. Uh, right. And this helps in A being in their specific setting, but because then, you know, in our case, then you can compute the image of the filtration uh, of the weight filtration ZV in this Z, Z0 of V, because like kind of, you can compute sort of its Eilach characteristic, and that's enough to know what the filtration is on Z0, on, on this perf zero quotient. Uh, and yeah, the Eilach characteristic is just a calculation in the you already had algebra, so it's not extremely hard. Um, and then you deduce stuff about N, about the monogamy. Okay, so yeah. You need QL, otherwise, I guess this will make so much sense. Yeah, right. There, there's another argument. I'll get to. I mean, I guess we. I don't know. I'll see if I discuss that or not. Uh, there's some. Ah, uh, I have to. Okay, so I still have time. So I'll wipe off the board and comment to it on this. Uh, Okay, so there's a paper. So there are people now that are working. Um, they're working with mob L coefficients, the same type of equivalence. Uh, I think this is a project mainly carried out by uh, Bezrukavnikov and Simon Rich. And what they, oh, so of course they can't argue by weights because they don't make sense, mob L. It's a good point. Um, so what they do is they, they they find some other way to show that some more explicit way to show that the, the monogamy is regular. And that, that's kind of useful for us, but not for GLN, for other groups. So we kind of take their, their idea. Um, okay. So, but what do we do in our setting? I guess. Okay, so the problem is uh, in mixed characteristics, this result is not known at all um, and for formal schemes. And if you take V sheaves, you're making everything worse. Um, right, but there's 
this result of the events like that. That tells you, uh, you okay, so Gavar still works. The Gavar theorem still works if uh, performance schemes. I hope I'm getting this correctly with smooth generic fiber plus, plus some disk open covering condition, uh, which is basically that you can, okay, so you, it's a condition that you can find an open or an et al cover of your formal scheme such that when you pass the generic fibers, each, each of the generic fibers on each of the et al neighborhoods maps to, uh, to a formal disk. I think this is a condition, fine. And so this can actually be applied to the minuscule local model. And again, and then, and then I guess the idea is, is you extend this thing again by monoidality, where is, which is where GLN, the GLN assumption helps, uh, right? And so I guess, um, I guess I'll finish here. <laughs>